All right, welcome to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer. So glad you're here with us this morning. If you don't know who I am, I am Pastor Jesse Brooks, and it's my pleasure to have you here with us this morning. I want to uh, welcome those joining us online as well. Uh, so glad you're with us. We believe God has something for you today. Amen. Uh, you're not here by accident, but God is moving in your life. Amen. So let's have an open heart to receive from wh whatever God has for us this morning. Father God, I thank you for every person and every person watching. God, I just pray that their hearts would be touched and set on fire for you today, God. Just pour out your Holy Spirit this morning. Encourage us while we lift up the name of Jesus and praise you with all our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's worship Jesus this morning.
Jesus is to trust Jesus and to trust him sometimes takes a little courage because we don't always know how things are gonna turn out um, I wanted to share with you some scripture Isaiah 55 8 through 11 says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire.
Sometimes we forget that he's Lord of all. Sometimes we forget that he is a sovereign God. Amen. I want to read you something. Actually, if I can pull it up here. Just a, a quick reminder here. And it's Philippians 1.12. And here we have Paul. He's in prison, right? Uh, and he's been mistreated up to this point. And uh, he says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel, has actually served to advance the gospel. You see, Paul knew something about God's sovereignty in his life that no matter wherever Paul found himself, 
that God was still sovereign enough that Paul could walk out his purpose and bring glory to Jesus Christ no matter where he was. Amen? And, and sometimes we get into life and things happen and, and we think, well, only if this was different or only if this would change, then I could actually do something, be something, become something in God. But my situation is keeping me from that. Amen. For students, maybe it's that roommate that you do not like. <laughs> right? Uh, for, for others, maybe it's the finances uh, of your home or, or the workplace that you have or co-workers or whatever it might be. If only that would change then. Amen? And we have to understand that he is Lord of all. And man, where God has you, he has strategically placed you. So no matter what it looks like or what it feels like, God wants to use you right where you're at to bring glory to his name and allow the power of God and the hope of Christ to be revealed through your life, no matter the circumstance. So we need to stop wishing we were in some other place or stop praying to get out of where we're at and just begin to let God use you, right? Right? Begin to let God encourage you and strengthen you and set you on fire right where you are at. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Father God, I just thank you that you are a sovereign God. And God, that my life and my life in you and, and what happens to me and my success is not tied up in my plans or tied up in my predicament. But my success in the things of life and even in God are found in you. And you are sovereign enough to accomplish it right where I am at, God. So, Father, I pray for every heart that's saying, man, that's me. God, I, I'm, not, I'm in a place I don't want to be. But, God, I need to recognize that I can be used by you right where I am at. So, Father, every heart that's open to you, Father, I just pray that you would release a fresh anointing. Come on. A fresh anointing in their lives today. Because you're going to do something great for the kingdom of God. You're going to do something great that brings glory to Jesus Christ if we'll look to you rather than our circumstance. So release that now, God. Release that fresh anointing. Even release a fresh zeal and joy in our hearts to begin to live for you and to see you change the things around us and the people around us by your glory and by your power and by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. All right. God is good. Probably not. It would take a, take a little bit to get make that happen, but I, I, I like the, the zeal for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, and that's the thing. I want to thank our worship team. Let's give our worship team a hand. One of, one of the things uh, uh, sometimes we fail to realize is they just don't show up on Sunday and make this happen, right? <laughs> there, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes, a lot of practice, uh, and, and a lot of uh, pursuit of excellence in the skills and the gifts that God's given them. And, and I appreciate our worship team uh, for doing that and putting in the time to, to, to I always word, I want to word this right because you guys are good, but they put in the time to get better. Amen. All for the glory of God. And shouldn't we all do that in whatever we're doing? Man, let's do it to the best of our ability, but let's try to get better at it. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. So I just want to thank our worship team uh, for putting in that time. This is a great group of people. So thank you. All right. So I'm going to get into our, my message or what I'm going to share with you today. Uh, but before we do that, we do have a few announcements I want to kind of hit right off. We have uh, BASIC, which is Brothers and Sisters in Christ. That's our college ministry. Uh, that we hear, have here at Plattsburgh House of Prayer. They meet uh, Mondays at 7 o'clock. Uh, so I know college just started last week. So uh, I just invite you, if you're a college student, mark your calendars. Come on out Mondays. They have a great time. We have a great group of people that, that lead it. Uh, so you're going to have lots of fun. Also, our youth, P-Hop Youth, starts up the 15th, September 15th. Uh, we're excited for that. At least a couple of us are. Uh, we're excited for that. Uh, we have a great time. So if you are a parent of a youth or a youth, uh, mark your calendar September 15th, and that'll run from 7 to 8.30. Uh, so, and also, we have our Summer Bash, Summer Blast Bash 
taking place. All right. All right. Whoever put that one together, right? <laughs> summer bash, blast, summer blast, bash, uh, summer blast bash is happening after this service. Uh, we're going to have a great time with the kids. They're having fun outside right now, uh, but at the end of the service, we're going to have hot dogs and chips available and, and all kinds of refreshments uh, for you to partake, and the kids are going to be playing some games and some water games after the service, and we encourage you to participate. If you don't have kids, you can still hang around and have some hot dogs and chips and fellowship, uh, but if you have kids, you know, uh, please stick around. Uh, let the kids uh, have some fun and have fun with the kids. Uh, we'll probably see maybe some parents dunked in some water today. Uh, we'll see how the service goes, but or how the end of the service goes. Uh, but amen, I think that's it. I'm going to invite Natasha to come up and share on our cereal trunk retreat. All right, so this will be the last time that you guys will be hearing from me about the cereal trunk or treat until we give you our update of how amazing uh, it went. Um, so this Saturday is the event. So we're going to be in the Skyway Shopping Center Plaza this Saturday, September 11th from 9 to 1 p.m. or until our supplies run out. Guys, we have over 400 boxes in this room over here. And I want to give a shout out. What's your daughter's name? Liliana. Liliana has been collecting, and with friends, has been collecting for our cereal drive on her own. And so she has been petitioning her neighbors and their friends to come drop cereal off on their front porch. So they have brought in over 101 boxes of cereal from their neighborhood and I just am so blessed by this. I just found out about this recently and just how wonderful it is and to see the neighborhood getting or community getting involved uh, and, and donating towards this event so that we can then turn around and bless the kids. So I was just tickled pink about that. Thank you so much for donating. We are hoping with the donations that have come in to reach 600 boxes. That is our goal uh, at least to be handing out at least 600 boxes. So we know that last year we uh, passed out to over 70 families, so we just want to double that amount this year. So we're so excited. If you still want to get involved, we aren't uh, there's no more drop-off dates for cereal, but you can give to uh, the text to give. Um, there we go. You can text cereal and an amount if you just want to give $20 and you haven't had an opportunity to give or something like that. Feel free to get involved. And you text to the 84321. Everybody say that with me. 84321. There's also still opportunity to sign up to be a part of our team on that event. You can sign up at our table right outside here in the foyer. Uh, if you'd like to serve with us, we will be there at 8 a.m., so it's a bit of an early morn. But, hey, we're getting ready for back to school, so we need it, right? <laughs> we need to get ourselves prepped. Um, just know that we're so thankful for how you've participated, and we can't wait to give you the update of how the community is impacted uh, by this. All right, yeah, share, share, share. Uh, we want everybody, uh, anybody and everybody to come on out and get cereal. Uh, so share with your friends, your neighbors, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it might be. This is for everyone. Whoever would like to come, anyone can come and, and with, their, with their kids, or we even have some people without their kids that come and kind of come and go through our trunk and treat, uh, trunk and trunk or treat, cereal line, uh, chunk or cereal, there we go. Uh, but we're also going to have coffee, uh, cider and donuts today. <laughs> we're good. Uh, we're we're going to have uh, cider and, and donuts there at the event as well. So come on out, get some cereal uh, or even just some cider and donuts. So uh, love to see you there. All right. I think that's it, right? Ooh, small groups. Yes. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, we have small groups starting up the 19th. Uh, next week, we have something we call a small group fair. So we're going to have tables all out in the foyer with our small group leaders at those tables after the 11 o'clock service. Uh, and what they're going to be doing is, is answering any questions that you might have. Uh, so you can be here next week and kind of w go and talk to all the small group leaders and, uh, and see which ones are going on. You're going to be able to ask the times, what they're about, who's, you know, who's open who's invited to them or uh, who they're open to. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> who they're open to. Uh, all kinds of good things. You're going to be able to talk to each one and, and find out which one best is best for you. Man, I am struggling today with my language. Uh, 
which one's best for you, but I want to remind you, uh, life change happens in the context of relationships, yeah. right? We're only as healthy as our secrets. And uh, when we're not in community, it's easy to keep secrets. It's easy to live a life with a fake mask on. Uh, and what small groups do is really give you the opportunity to do life together, real life with real people, and, and be able to take off the mask and, and let people know where you're struggling, where you're hurting, and where, nobody forces you to. But we just hope that you build relationships that are close enough where you can actually be real with somebody. And, and when we gather around one another in that place in prayer and encouragement and strength, right, uh, we, we, we uh, get healed. And we also begin to step out of some of those hang-ups that we have. Amen. How many here have hang-ups? All right. The ones that didn't raise their hand, it denials your hang-up. Okay, <laughs> we all have hang-ups and uh, the ability to come together and, and know we have hang-ups and encourage one another beyond those hang-ups. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So small groups, September 19th, uh, we have our small group fair next week. Come on out and check those small groups out. Or if you cannot make it next week, you can go to our website or our church center app to see the groups that are open, available times and places there as well. So amen. I think that's it, right? All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's get into what I have for us. I want to pray first. Father God, I just thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. Father, I, I pray as we get into your word today, as, as we, we, we talk about uh, your word and your business, God, Father, I pray that our hearts would be encountered, that it would be changed, because your word isn't like any other book. It's the living word. It goes in and it impacts us in deep places. And Father, I pray that when we leave this place, we'd be changed, that we would be different than when we walked in. So come, Holy Spirit, have your way, and anoint your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I'm launching a new message series called In. There we go in. Uh, how many of you feel like you're in, right? Say, I'm in, if you feel like you're in. I'm in. I'm in. All right. This message series, you don't know what you're in for, right? <laughs> uh, the message series has to do with, with identity, is what we're really going to be talking about, is our identity. Uh, we're going to tackle four uh, qualities that are true identities of who we are in Christ. Amen. So I'm hoping you're encouraged this week. And all these things, these four things we're going to be talking about, they all begin with the letters I-N. In, right? <laughs> so uh, I hope you're allowing yourself to be open to what God is speaking. I, I believe God is going to do some great things through this series. And the four qualities that we're going to be talking about over the four themes are this. Number one is I'm invited. I'm invited, right? I'm invited into God's family. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or what you've done. Believe me when I say you are invited into God's family. And the second one is I'm invaluable. I'm invaluable. I'm invaluable to God's work. You see, we all have a gift that God has given each and every one of us a unique and special gift, which means everyone matters when it comes to the things of God and what God is doing. Amen. So I want to encourage you that you are invaluable to what God is doing and invite you into it. The third thing is I'm influential. Someone say I'm influential. I'm influential. All right. Uh, whether you know it or not, you have influence. And I kind of shared about it here at mid-service, uh, the reality that, that God has strategically placed you wh wherever you're at, whether in your families, your homes, your workplace, the friends you have. God has strategically placed you in order to ha have influence in their lives and to bring the light and the hope of Jesus Christ to those around you. So you have influence. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, and finally is I'm invested I'm invested. I'm invested in the work of God. So we're going to be going over those four things, but for today, I'm going to talk about one of the, the core themes of the Gospels, right? And that's that you are invited 
into God's family. You are invited into God's family. Now, simply because of our human makeup, uh, one of the worst feelings is to feel left out or uninvited, isn't it? Or unwanted, right? Uh, have you ever scrolled Instagram and you saw all your friends hanging out somewhere and are having a great time and you get that kind of heavy feeling in your heart and you're kind of like, how come I wasn't invited, right? Or maybe you've been somewhere and you felt that you didn't belong or you were uninvited in some way, right? Maybe, maybe you went to a church service and you sat somewhere and someone came and tapped you on the so- shoulder and said, hey, you're, you're in my seat. <laughs> Could you get up and move? <laughs> You get up and you feel uninvited, don't you? You feel unwelcome, don't you, right? Uh, Or maybe, how about school? At school. Man, I I remember growing up, and and it really breaks my heart to see people that have been left feeling unwanted or rejected or uninvited. I mean, I remember riding on the bus and certain kids wouldn't allow other people to sit by them simply because of who they were, the clothes they wore, or the family background that they had. Right? I remember times in high school where kids would go to a, a new kid, would, would come to uh, our lunch table, and, and man, there's some mean kids out there. They would say the nastiest, meanest things to them, and they would get to our table, hear what they're saying about them, and then walk away with a, with a head hung low. And I'm like, man, why in the world would you do that in the first place? But the reality is he left feeling unwanted, uninvited, unworthy, right? We live in a world that's full of rejection, that's full of telling others they're uninvited. And if you've ever felt ashamed, unworthy, unwanted, or uninvited, I want to share with you one of the the greatest truths of Jesus' gospel. And it's this. Jesus invites the others who others reject. Jesus invites the people others reject. Jesus invites all those that religious organizations or people despise or the world rejects. Jesus invites all those who people overlook, the ones that feel unwanted and uninvited. You see, you're invited into God's family. If you're watching online and you're tuning in, I want you to know you are invited to God's family family. I want to show you something in Luke 7. That's where we're going to be. If you have your Bibles, you can tap there or go there. If you have phones, you can tap there. Uh, And in Luke chapter 7, which took place obviously over 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was walking the, the, the land in Israel and he claimed to be God in the flesh, right? This is, this is Jesus, the Son of God. He, he went about and he claimed to be God in the flesh. And people didn't know if they should believe him or just think he was a crazy person, right? Who would claim to be that? But most people of that time would have agreed that if he was God in the flesh, then he would most certainly be in favor of a group of people known as the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees were holy rollers, right? They, they were very outwardly religious and pious in every way. And they were visibly learned in scripture. And they prayed these long, boisterous prayers. And they would never, ever be around someone who was impure, unclean, or a sinner in any way. Now, Simon who was a Pharisee, here in Luke 7, he threw a party. And it's not like the parties we would throw. (laughs) It was probably pretty boring and dull. But anyways, this Simon Pharisee, he threw a party. And uh, and it would have been not a party with music and games and all that stuff going on. It would have been a collection of the who's who's of pompous religious people, right? It would have been Rabbi Monopoly guy and Sir Bottom Jaw, right? And they would have sat around going, yeah, (laughs) sometimes to be. 
That's my best impression I could come up with, guys. <laughs> uh, that was going to be a long day then. Uh, but anyway, so it would have been a collection of the who's who's of these pompous religious people talking about weighty and heady theological topics, right? And there, there would have been no music. There wouldn't have been any kind of cornhole being played at this party, but more of a public discussion where they would show off what they knew. They would have eaten in the outer room, which means it was kind of this room inside the house that was open to the porch out in front where people, the common man, would kind of walk by and begin to gather and listen in on what they were saying so they could congregate and, and listen to their hyper-spiritualized talk about politics, the, theology, and kind of cultural trends of the day. And you might ask, why would anybody want to stop on the porch and gather and listen to the, these pompous people talk? And you got to remember, they didn't have internet back then. There was no Wi-Fi. There was no Netflix, there was no TV, not even rabbit ear stuff. And so there was nothing going on, so this was it. So they would kind of gather and kind of peer into and listen to kind of the who's who's party that was taking place. So Jesus was invited to this party by Simon the Pharisee. But suddenly, but suddenly someone else comes that was not invited. And when this person walked in, these pious Pharisees were shocked, literally shocked, right? Because this stuff doesn't happen. Someone uninvited to a Pharisee's, uh, Pharisee's house doesn't come. And the Pharisees hated every moment of what was about to take place. Let's look at the account in Luke 7 verse 37. And it says this, a woman in that town who lived a sinful life, which is code for she was a prostitute. The woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. So just imagine the Pharisee sitting uh, you know, in the outer room, kind of waxing poetically to, to impress Jesus and all that they knew and all that they could, uh, you know, expound on. And suddenly a prostitute walks in and they all kind of gasp, like, oh! She isn't supposed to be here. This isn't right. She wasn't invited. In fact, she's impure. She's a sinner. She's unwelcome. She's not invited. Now let's put ourselves in her shoes for a moment. Because I can promise you this wasn't her life plan. Right? While other little girls kind of dreamed about being doctors or lawyers, her life dream wasn't to be a prostitute. So I don't know how she got here, but what I do know is every day men used her and abused her. And women would have hated her and scorned her every day. I do know she would have felt very unloved and very ashamed and most certainly never felt invited to anywhere safe let alone invited to anywhere important. And I know she would have felt like many of us feel. Because many of us feel not good enough. Guilty for where we've been and what we've done. Wondering how we ended up where we are today. Right? No one plans to be divorced. No one planned that. No one planned to be bankrupt. No one planned to be estranged from their kids, right? No one planned to be a slave to alcohol or drugs or pornography. No one plans those things in their lives. And this woman, she felt uninvited. 
She was in a place that no one wanted her. But what does she do? She walks straight in to the party, dashes over to Jesus, and falls to her knees in a posture of worship before Jesus. And she breaks open a jar of perfume and pours it on Jesus' feet. Now, why was that so significant and important? You see, it's all about the jar, the jar of perfume. Because the jar of perfume would have been her most valuable possession, her most valuable possession. It would have been her nest egg of savings, right? They didn't have stock back then, right? They, they, what they would do is they would put their money into something that would hold value. So here... Uh, <clears throat> All the money she's earned and all the, the hardships that she's had to endure to get to this place, to have the money she has, she's put in her perfume. This was her nest egg. And it was also a symbol of her prostitution. She would have wore perfume, right? Because perfume was extremely uncommon back then, and, and women certainly didn't wear perfume around. So for her to have the perfume on her, it was one kind of a, a, an idea of beautification, but it also was, was, was beautifully smelling, and, and it would have also let the men know in the area that she was available, right? So it was also a symbol of her prostitution. And what did she do with that jar of perfume? In one single act... She extravagantly worshiped Jesus by breaking it open and was symbolically repenting of her old life, right? By doing this, she was saying, this is all that I have. And, I, and, and, and it represents my future. This is the best I have, and I'm offering it all to you, Jesus, Everything that I, I hope to be, everything that I, my plans that I might have had or the future that I hope for God, I, I, I'm, I'm giving it all for you. And everything that I had done up to this point in my past and everything that I had to deal with God, I, 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 I break it open. I, 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 I let you know. I, I, I pour it out over your feet. That's not who I am anymore. She worshiped him in that moment, crying before him. And in verse 38, it says this, as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. But watch this in verse 39. When the Pharisee, Simon, who had invest, invited him, being Jesus, saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet... He would know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. You see, Simon thinks because Jesus is letting this sinner touch him, it proves that he's not the son of God and definitely not some kind of prophet for God. But Jesus, to prove Simon wrong, is about to read his mind. And in Luke 7, verse 44, it says, Then he, Jesus, turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house, and you done, did not give me any water for my feet, but she, has, she, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Simon, you did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, Simon, I tell you, her many sins, yes, I know, her many sins have been forgiven. As her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven, little, loves little. And then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Daughter, you are made whole. You are a new creation to God. Now, why did this woman risk so much 
to be at the feet of Jesus. I mean, she knew who she was, and everyone else knew who she was. Why would she risk so much to be at the feet of Jesus? Why? Why would she walk through the nice part of town where people despised her? Why would she uh, have passed through the people gathered on the porch who would have been whispering insults as she passed by, right? Why would she have walked into the house of a Pharisee who wouldn't even have walked on the same side of the street as she was? Why would she have ignored all the glares of, of those in the room and ran to the feet of Jesus? Why? To be honest, I'm not quite sure because the text isn't exactly clear. But I can tell you what I believe. I believe she must have somehow experienced his unconditional love and indescribable grace. She certainly saw him perform miracles or heard him teach or, or sensed his divine nature in some way. And it was probably that day that she experienced it, seeing the overwhelming urgency and emotion that she had uh, when she busted in the room. In fact, if you actually put the other Gospels together, it gives a clearer picture of what actually had taken place that day. You see, that day... Looking into the other Gospels, Mark, Luke, or Mark and John, and Matthew, you see that Jesus was actually in that town, her town, that day. And he preached the message that day. And the summary of that message was this. You're invited. You're invited into God's family. You're invited, you're welcome, come, just as you are, come. In fact, this is the exact message she would have heard on that day as she burst into Simon's house here in Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29. Take notes, write it down quick. He said, come to me. This was Jesus. This was his message to the town that he was in that morning. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In other words, he was saying, come to me, those who are wrecked and, and overcome with guilt. Come to me, those who are burdened by shame. Come to me, those who are tired of never living up to your own standard, let alone other people's standards. Come to me, those who have been rejected by the world and even religion. Come to me, those who, who've lost all hope. Come to me, those who feel desperate or can't go on. Come to me. That was his message that morning. Come to me. Learn from me, for I am gentle and I am humble. And my Father has sent me to tell you, you're invited. You're invited. You're invited into the heart of God. You're invited into the family of God. You're invited to be a part of what God is doing. You're invited. It doesn't matter where you've been, where you come from, or what your past is like. You're invited. Now, this is a powerful story. And I want you to notice that pointing out this woman's sins didn't lead her out of a lifestyle of sin. Judging her lifestyle didn't change her lifestyle. Showing, uh, shaming her didn't set her free from her past. But an invitation to know the Son of God, to experience his grace and his love, that's what brought freedom. Amen? We can get our worship team up here. Because the one thing we know, because scripture tells us, is that Jesus didn't come for the healthy. He came for the sick. Jesus didn't come for the self-proclaimed righteous. He came for the hurting, the broken, 
and the repentant sinners. And Jesus says, you're invited. You are invited. Come as you are. Come. And come quickly. Listen to me. If, if you've ever felt unwanted or felt like you failed or even doubted God or maybe even felt hurt by God, I promise you, you're still invited. You're still invited. God is saying, come to me with your hurts. Come to me with your doubts. Come to me with your addictions. Come to me with your hang-ups. Come to me with your past. Just come to me, and I will give you rest. You're invited. Doesn't matter what you did yesterday, last week, last month. Doesn't matter what you did an hour ago. Man, come to me. You're invited. And if you do come, don't just come alone, right? Here at the Plattsburgh House of Prayer, is a, our hope is that it's a just come to Jesus kind of church. Just come. Just come to Jesus. We don't care who you are, what you've done. Just come because you're invited. And don't come alone. Invite your friends, your family, your coworkers. Why? Because all, all are invited into the family of God. Amen. And what we do as believers, what we want to do is live a life that portrays an open invitation to Jesus. The moment that we begin to be a club that's better than everyone else, that seems to have an invitation-only type policy, Man, we've walked away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that gospel says everyone's invited. All are invited. You're invited to the family of God. And as we end today, remember that. If you're watching online and, and you're worried about your past, I want to promise you, you are invited. Just come. Come to Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's stand as we end. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. You're invited to the family of God. You're invited. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would draw people, that we would feel the invitation into the family of God today. Father, maybe some of us have received Christ and we've been saved. But man, we've walked far from you. God, let us know, let us have confidence today that that invitation is still open, that we can still run to you no matter what. Father, help us run and accept the invitation of Jesus Christ today. And Father, help us be a people who live a lifestyle that portrays the invitation to be a part of the family of God to all. Father, I just pray for that great grace to fall on us today. That when we leave this place, that our families would know it. That our friends would know it. That our co-workers, co-workers would know it that we would have a, an anointing on our lives that portrays an open invitation into the things of God. Thank you, Jesus. And for those that feel unworthy today, Father, let sweet repentance take place. Let us heed the call, heed the invitation and run to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. So as we leave today, let us leave emboldened, empowered, and confident that all are invited. 
and leave empowered and knowing that I'm invited in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we end today, I don't want to end without giving an opportunity for someone to do what this woman did who ran to the feet of Jesus, who heeded the invitation and gave her life to Christ in that moment with that jar saying, I give you everything and I walk away from my past and I live for you, Jesus. And if that's you here today or maybe you're watching online, I want to encourage you. All it takes is you turning to a real and living God and expressing your heart to him, letting him know that you love him, that you need him, and that you're willing to give your life to him. And it's real simple. And if that's you, I want you to pray this prayer. Father, forgive me my sins. Father, forgive me my sins. And I receive your love and forgiveness. I receive your love and forgiveness. I say yes to the invitation. I say yes to the invitation. I know I'm welcome. I know I'm welcome. So I run into the heart of God. So I run into the heart of God. And I give you my life. And I give you my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I make you my Lord and my Savior. And I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit. My life is no longer my own. My life is no longer my own. But my life is in the hands of God. But my life is in the hands of God. Thank you, Jesus. If you said that prayer, you just made the best decision of your life. Amen. If you said that prayer, I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to be here up, up here after the service, after our team is finished singing. I'm going to be here. I'd love to pray with you. So just come on up and, and chat with me. I'd, I'll stand with you in, in prayer and encourage you for the decision you just made. Or if you need prayer for anything, come feel free to come up, and I'd love to pray with you. If you said that prayer online, click the link below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, pray with you, and send you a gift that's going to help you on your faith journey that you just started today. Amen. So praise the Lord. Let's leave this place knowing that not only are we invited, but portraying a lifestyle that all are invited to the family of God. Amen. So God bless. Our worship team is going to play us off. And remember, you only have one life to live. There's no do-overs. Live it for Jesus and you'll never, ever be disappointed. Amen. God bless.